Okay, let's go ahead and solve this fourth degree polynomial. And in algebra, when you hear this word polynomial, that means uh, a lot because we know a lot about polynomials. Matter of fact, a good portion of uh, your study of algebra, starting from pre-algebra and into algebra one and algebra two, uh, you really are studying polynomials in depth. Sometimes you don't even realize it, but uh, in fact you are, and I'll kind of explain uh, that here in a second. But uh, this one, uh, this particular problem, uh, is a fourth degree polynomial. It's a fourth degree because the highest power here is four. And that tells us something, okay? If we know this thing's a polynomial, we know the degree of the polynomial, then we we have some insight about how many solutions it has, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll kind of get into all this et cetera, et cetera stuff here in a second. But um, uh, polynomials are tremendously important, again, in algebra. You certainly need to know them. Now, a problem like this, uh, you may encounter in Algebra 1, but anything beyond Algebra 1, like uh, Algebra 2, Intermediate Algebra, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, you're certainly going to be facing something like this. Not that difficult to solve. Okay, Of course, if you think you even know how to solve it, pause the video and do so. But uh, let's go ahead and just um, rehash a couple basic things that you may not have been aware of. So let's take a look at an equation like 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. So uh, when you start off learning um, algebra, maybe in even pre-algebra, you're saying, oh, okay, I'm solving equations. This is a linear equation, but in fact, this is a polynomial equation. It's a polynomial degree one equation. This has one answer to it, okay? So you don't state, we don't say, hey, we're gonna study polynomial degree one equations when you start uh, to study um, algebra. Uh, you start studying linear equations, how to solve equations, et cetera. Now, yeah, uh, from this point, you graduate into solving things maybe like this, 2x uh, squared is equal to 8. And this guy right here is what? This is a quadratic equation, but it's also a polynomial. It's a second degree polynomial. And typically in most uh, algebra courses, you'll spend a full chapter just learning all about quadratic equations. That's a tremendous amount of information to know. But again, you're studying polynomials, okay? Now, anything beyond a degree 2, all right, so degree two is quadratic. Anything uh, third degree, in other words, third power or higher, well, this gets us into more advanced uh, mathematics. So uh, again, depending on what course you're in, generally you'll start studying this uh, after algebra one, and uh, you, get, you can get very sophisticated. All right, I'm just finishing up some things in my pre-calculus course or using uh, complex trigonometric form of complex numbers to solve for uh, like advanced polynomial equations. So this uh, topic continues to kind of build and build and build the more you progress into mathematics. But we love working with polynomials because we so we know so much about them. Okay, so I'm going to go over some basic things that you should know at this level, especially if you, especially if you think that you're going to be solving uh, or be uh, given a problem like this on a test or a quiz. So we'll cover all this in just one second. Uh, and obviously, I'm going to solve this uh, equation here step by step. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program uh, by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, essentially, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. Uh, again, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very shortly. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, ALEX, uh, Teacher Certification Exam, ASVAB, there's so many exams out there that people take. All those exams have a good amount of math on them. So if you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on the exam. So let me help you out. Just go to my website. You can check out my full course catalog. If you do not see your exam, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great uh, homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you that are just having a tough time in your math course. But um, if you're truly serious about wanting to learn math and, and be great at it, well, then you got to do this. You got to have great math notes. So uh, I've been teaching math uh, for decades. And one thing is crystal clear to me, those students who are working every day to have fantastic math notes, they almost always do very well 
And the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone uh, during math class, talk to their friends, and do homework in another class. Listen, I get it. You know, I did all these things in the 1980s, except for the cell phone part. We didn't have any other cell phones. Uh, but we were plenty distracted, okay? And my grades reflected that. You got to take great notes because notes is the key to staying focused. And you can't take a day off. There's information coming at you con uh, constantly when you're in any class, okay? So focus is the key to success. But as you're uh, working to improve your notes, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's talk about a few things here, all right? Now, polynomials, huge, huge, huge topic, all right? Um, and by the way, I have a ton of videos on this on my YouTube channel. Of course, if you really, really want to master this, I would say sign up for my uh, algebra 1 course or Algebra 2 course, depending on what level you're at. But some things that you need to know, and I've done videos on this, again, in my uh, Algebra and Algebra 2 playlist on my YouTube channel, but if you want to learn it more comprehensively and more formally, you may want to consider signing up for one of my courses. Okay, so polynomials. First of all, you need to uh, understand what is a polynomial. You need to know the definition of a polynomial, okay? Effectively, you're going to have a variable or variables, but the power up here, like... Uh, third degree, these guys are going to be positive zero or positive integers. Okay, you're not going to have any decimals or fractions. That's the uh, kind of the main thing here. And then the coefficient can be any real number, right? So then, of course, we can have different terms. We can have binomials, minomials, uh, monomials, trinomials, and all kinds of different uh, things. But this is effectively the basic, basic definition of a polynomial. You got to understand. Hey, am I looking at a polynomial or not? Because if you are, then you know a lot about, uh, you know, what to do, okay? Now, along with polynomials, of course, you're going to need to know how to solve various type of equations. We already talked about them, like a degree one basic equations like this. I mean, if you can't solve this, then this uh, uh, particular uh, video is going to be beyond the scope of, you know, where you're at. But... Along with uh, these basic equations, you're going to have to be super good at solving quadratic equations. Okay, these are degree two polynomials. Okay, and they come up all the time. All right, so you're going to have to really, really know how to solve quadratic equations. That's quite a bit of information in and of itself. So this is kind of like for this level of math, I'm kind of highlighting some main things that you need to know. Now, for more advanced mathematics, okay, third degree and beyond. You're going to have to know some other things, things like the rational root theorem, uh, Descartes' uh, rule of signs. Okay, now if you don't uh, know what I'm doing here, don't worry about it. Again, you can learn about this in my uh, Algebra 2 course, but if you, you know, you may not be at this level yet, but you will be getting there uh, pretty uh, shortly. So, rational root theorem, Descartes' rule of signs. You're also going to need to know uh, about uh, polynomial, like synthetic division. These are all advanced kind of skills, uh, graphs of polynomials. There's a lot going on. But the main thing that we really need to understand is this thing right here, the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, And the fundamental theorem of algebra uh, basically states this. Let's go back to our problem. So the degree of your polynomial... In this case, it's four. We're dealing with a fourth degree polynomial. That's how many solutions this thing is going to have. Okay, so this polynomial will have four solutions. It's going to have four solutions. Now, what type of solutions? Well, we don't know that yet. We could have real number solutions. We could have complex number, imaginary number solutions. We just don't know. Okay. However, we do know absolutely that this thing does have four uh, solutions. And when you get into more um, uh, advanced mathematics, like in the pre-calculus, you start doing crazy problems like this. Here, let me show you here real quick. Uh, let me uh, erase a little bit right here. So like x to the 6 is equal to 1, okay? So this is a polynomial equation, and how many solutions does it have? Well, it has six solutions. Six solutions, how are we going to find that? x to the 6 is equal to 1. Six solutions for this equation? Uh, is there? Yes, indeed there is, but we have to use uh, in, uh, more advanced mathematics. We've got to really get into some other higher level stuff. So this is for later on 
when you're into pre-calculus, but this stuff here is mostly for you algebra and algebra one students. So I'm reviewing things that you need to know because if I just show you how to do this equation, you're like, okay, yeah, I got that, da, 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 da. But you may not be, you know, um, you know, seeing the big picture. And that's really important, especially when you're dealing with polynomial equations or later on down the line, you're going to just get completely lost, especially in the more advanced, um, you know, problems and stuff that we deal with in pre-calculus. Okay. All right. So let's get to this problem. Now, by the way, here, one other uh, thing here that uh, you need to know when it comes to any equation, all right, especially polynomial equations, you got to be super good at factoring, okay? So all these different techniques to solve any equation, factoring is one of them. Of course, you learn all that in your quadratic equations. You need to know that because that's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, so here we have uh, x to the fourth minus 1. You need to recognize that this is a difference of two squared situation. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then let me actually or write that, give myself some more room. Then you need to review factoring. Okay, if you don't know how to factor, you're going to have a tough time in algebra, period. So, uh, again, I have tons of videos on this stuff in my algebra playlist. All right, but this is the difference of two squared. All right, we can see we have x to the fourth minus one. Well, how is this working? Well, this is x squared squared. Okay, that's one square right there minus one squared, okay, so one squared is one. So this is a difference of two squared, and when we follow this rule, and if you're really good at factoring, we could factor x to the fourth minus one like so. So anytime you can factor in algebra when you're dealing with an equation, always do so, okay? And we got this equation set equal to zero, so that's excellent as well. So now let's take a look at these factors. I have this factor times this factor is equal to zero. So I have one thing times another thing, and the answer is zero. So if I was to say to you, hey, listen, I got uh, these two uh, numbers. I don't really know much about these numbers. Um, I do know when I multiply them together, my answer is zero. Uh, can you tell me anything about these numbers? Well, you might be saying, well, yeah, one of these numbers has to be zero because you can't get that answer zero unless one or both of these numbers uh, are zero, okay? That's the zero product property. And that's why we love to factor because uh, if we have these factors set equal to zero, then we can set each individual factor equal to zero like so and solve. And that's what we're gonna be doing here to unlock this equation, okay? So let's look at this guy here first. I'll talk about this here a second. So x squared minus one, I'm gonna set that equal to zero, okay? And this, in fact, is a, uh, a polynomial equation. It's a little quadratic equation, right? So I'm going to move the 1 to the other side. I got x squared is equal to 1. So to solve for x, I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. I get x is equal to positive negative 1. Do not forget that little positive and negative sign because this is um, two separate roots, okay? x is equal to a positive 1 and a negative 1. These are two of the four solutions I'm looking for. Remember, up here, the fundamental theorem of algebra is saying, hey, well, we need four solutions. Well, we just found one. Or I'm sorry, we just found two. We got one and negative one. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this other uh, equation right here. I have x squared plus one is equal to zero. I'm gonna move this one to the other side. Now I got x squared is equal to negative one. And right here, this is where a lot of students might be like, hmm, you know, what do I do here? Well, this is a uh, situation that we're, we're gonna to need to know about complex numbers, okay? So when I take the square root of both sides, I have the square root of negative one. So the square root of negative one by definition is I, okay? And when I take the square root of this, this is the imaginary part. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, again, follow, uh, you, you wanna follow up on some more videos in my Algebra 2 playlist. And I think I have some in my Algebra playlist. I definitely cover all this in my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 course, but this is I, and when we take the square root of it, we get positive and negative I. So this is our um, other two roots. Now these two roots here are in the complex number system and these uh, two roots here are in the real number system, okay? So that's what we have. Again, when you're dealing with polynomials, all right, uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra says, hey, we have four solutions. I just can't tell you 
that could be a combination of real uh, and or complex imaginary numbers. And this is, you know, a very in-depth, uh, you know, topic. There's a lot to know, and I'm leaving a lot of stuff out here. So again, a big part of what you're going to be studying in algebra are uh, dealing with polynomials. Now, if you got this problem right and you understood everything I'm talking about, then I must in turn give you a big happy face with a mohawk, uh, 1980s style mohawk. We used a lot of hairspray uh, in the 1980s. Uh, I mean, that was like, you know, probably pretty dangerous uh, in terms of our hair. They're probably pretty flammable. But anyways, there you go. There's a nice uh, mohawk with an A plus and a 100%. And I'll give you two stars, okay? This wasn't the hardest prom, but it wasn't the easiest prom. But it uh, uh, certainly, you know, tells me that you're on the right track if you understand, you know, uh, everything that I'm talking about. And if you have a pretty good idea of all this other stuff I'm talking about. Now, what I don't want you to do is to be overwhelmed. Be like, I have no idea, you know. Well, this is why you have to take things step by step. And how could you possibly learn all of that without taking notes, okay? So everything I tell you, I'm telling you from experience. If you watch my videos, you know, listen, I'm going to tell you the real deal about math. I'm not going to give you some just shortcut. Be like, hey, here, here's how to do the prom. See you later. Because guess what? You know, uh, you're probably going to struggle in other problems because you don't really have a good, strong, foundational, you know, uh, comprehensive skill set, all right? So the key to learning math is don't take shortcuts work hard, okay, take notes, listen to your teacher, ask questions, and if you need help above, above and beyond that, well then, please, uh, if you like my teaching style, uh, please consider subscribing, okay, I have over a thousand plus videos on YouTube, been on YouTube for over 10 years, basic to advanced math, okay, I'm here to help you, my goal or my passion is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Of course, my uh, best math help will be in my math, math help program. But if these videos, you know, help you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. But again, when math gets difficult, uh, that's the time where you're going to have to double down on working harder. Okay, because all students, even those students that are strong in math, when they reach a certain level of math, might be pre-calculus or calculus, everybody's having a challenge. Okay, so uh, don't think that... You know, you're not smart because you're working hard to learn this stuff. No, that's just the way it goes. Okay. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.